Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another edition of a Talking Tennis Watch Along. My name is Miles David. If you are familiar with the vibes here at Talking Tennis, hopefully I am a familiar face to you. If I'm not a familiar face, nice to meet you and welcome into the live stream. We will be watching along uh, the second round match between Naomi Osaka, wild card, and number 16 seed Karolina Pliskova, who is actually a three-time champion in these courts of Brisbane. So we are looking at first ball in a very anticipated matchup. This is Pliskova's first match of the 2024 season, and this is Naomi Osaka's second match of the 2024 season, and she's on the comeback trail. So it should be an interesting match. Naomi Osaka is up serving first, and she's up 30-15. Hey, Terry. Nice to see you in the chat. Who do you guys think is going to win this match? I saw on the screen the win predictor was a uh, favor to Pliskova, which given the fact that I believe Pliskova was actually beaten Naomi at this very event before in their head-to-head, -head, and she's won the event three times, I can see why they would give her a little bit of an edge. But... No, they haven't. No, they, yeah, they have played here at Brisbane. They played in uh, the January 2020 version of Brisbane, and Pliskova won 6-2 in the third. So there's that. I am pulling for Osaka, but I would not be surprised if uh, Pliskova edges this one out just because she has the more recent time on court, and Osaka's been away from uh, competitive play since, well, not yesterday or day before that was standing. She's been away from play since 2022. So, However, Osaka is a four-time major champion and all of those major championships coming on hard court. So she's definitely not a stranger to the occasion. Hi, Yokardis. Welcome to the live stream and watch along. Yokardis, if you aren't already subscribed or tapped into Talking Tennis, please do so. We would love to have you. It looks like our poll here at Talking Tennis land is Osaka winning at a 67% rate. That's what you guys think that have voted in the poll. If you haven't voted in the poll, feel free to do so. Um, just like Osaka is feeling free to open up her service game or close her service game, I should say, with a hold. I think Pliskova winning it in 2020 was the last time she won Brisbane. I don't think Brisbane has been played since 2020, actually. So maybe Pliskova in some weird way is the defending champion. <laughs> A lot of things change after 2020, so wouldn't I be surprised? Pliskova is about to serve here. Uh, my feed, may, let me see if I can refresh my feed the best I can because the screen is a little bit quicker than I am. I'm watching in the States and maybe the, uh, it's a long way away. I'm a long way away from Australia. So if my feed is a little bit behind and you guys are like, Miles, I saw that shot 50 seconds ago. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I work with what I have, okay? And Tennis Channel, although I am very grateful to have a channel that's dedicated to tennis, uh, it can be a little behind. Oh, wow. Osaka at this uh, service game of Plisco hits a great backhand passing shot down the line. If our producer is listening, I think Google scores may be on the right track for me. I'm not sure. Cause this one's like this, the screen is two points ahead from what my stream is showing. So I'm not hundred percent sure if that can change. If not, we can work with it. This is also a meeting of two former world number ones, by the way, sometimes people forget that Pliskova got to that, uh, 
that pinnacle of the sport, but she got there in 2017 and Osaka got there in 2019. So this is a matchup of two decorated tennis players for sure. Some break points Naomi has been able to generate in this service game from Pliskova. Pliskova has given her a little, a little bit of a, a free reign here with some double faults or a double fault that I've seen so far. And Pliskova's playing with a pretty heavily bandaged left hand and wrist. I haven't seen her with that too often, so maybe it's something that she carried on in from last season. So that's something to keep an eye out here in case things get a little physical. Osaka's definitely hitting the ball clean. She has a good put-away shot here, and she does with the forehand, creating that break point. I don't believe this matchup is going to have too many long rallies. That's for sure. Neither of them are known for their ability to extend, extend the point. We're looking at, you know, first serve, first return, boom, forehand, backhand kind of points, which I personally like. So. Pliskova was able to knock off one of those break points with a, with a good serve. Like I was saying, this was this is definitely a matchup of first strike tennis. My stream commentators that I can hear in one of my ears. Is saying that Pliskova was the first Czech woman to get to world number one. As I was just mentioning that both of these players are former world number ones. That's interesting to me because I'm also thinking of Martina Navratilova, who was from Czechoslovakia before it was changed to the Czech Republic. But maybe she got to world number one when she, yeah, I think that makes sense because Navratilova defected or whatever the political politically correct word is to the U S and maybe she got to world number one while she was a U.S. citizen. So, yeah, that's an interesting little tidbit. I did not know Pliskova was the first woman from Czech Republic to get to that, that number one spot. Osaka has another break point here to take an early lead. Two double faults in this game from Pliskova. So if she gets broken, she's helped to break herself. That's for sure. Interesting. Interesting. Sorry, I'm, I'm also listening to the commentary and they're talking about the height of Pliskova and how sometimes the athletes can kind of fib a little bit. Sometimes the women uh, take down a couple of inches on their height and sometimes the men add a couple of inches. It's interesting how that works on their official heights on the websites or uh, the media plans and stuff like that. On my stream, Pliskova just... Uh, saved another break point with a forehand winner. So it's back at deuce, which is on the screen right now too. So that works. So I think I'm like a, a second behind compared to where I was before. So that works. Another break point here for Osaka. Osaka got that break point with a blistering backhand return off of a pretty mediocre second serve from Pliskova. So, again, if Osaka manages to break here, this would be a great start to the match for her, but also Pliskova uh, not coming out of the, the blocks very sharp at, at all. Break point number four here for, here for Naomi Osaka. If anyone's listening, by the way, this is totally off topic to the match. I see that Brisbane is... 
sponsored by Evie, E-V-I-E. I'm a, imagining that's an Australian brand of some sort. Please tell me what, what kind of brand or what kind of uh, association that is, because I'm not sure. Oh, Saka nearly misses converting on that break point with a wide forehand. Back to Deuce. Remind me to bring up something about Naomi's um, gear when she serves again, because there's something I'm noticing I didn't notice before. Strangely enough, Pliskova's serve is actually helping her get out of trouble on these break points. Evie is the new presenting rights partner for the Brisbane International. The new multi-year agreement is the first electric vehicle charging sports partnership. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Interesting stuff. Some really, really good hitting off the ground here, I have to say. When both of them are on balance and leaning into their shots, you definitely have some powerful ground strokes from both of these women, which is my favorite kind of tennis to watch. I mean, I think, you know, elongated rallies are great. I think sometimes they're very uh, intricate and full of precision and endurance. But personally, I like big serves and returns. <laughs> so this is right up my alley. A lengthy game here. We're at five plus deuces, and now we're at three double faults in the game for Pliskova. At least three. I may have missed one, but there's been three. Yeah, three in this in this game. Another break point for Osaka. And let's see how she can let's see how she deals with that one. A second serve incoming from Pliskova. And Osaka's jumping and moving and ready to jump on anything that's short. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow. Backhand, not even that close to the line as a winner, gets her that break. Wow. First break of the match, two love Naomi Osaka. Our producer is saying Rafa's back. The world is good again. I would have to agree. 2024 is off. I mean, we're two days into it here in the States. But uh, in tennis land, we're we're off to a, a pretty hot start. I think there's already been a couple of matches so far on the ATP side where players have had extended three-set matches and saved a bunch of match points. I believe Jan Leonard Struff and Marin Cilic are were playing in the ATP 250 in Hong Kong. And Jan Leonard Struff saved nine match points. Personally, if I was playing a tennis match and I had not converted the match after nine match points, that would be my villain origin story. <laughs> I would not be a happy camper at all. So I hope Marion Chilich is okay and hope he sleeps well at night because I would not. And another another player, uh, Laszlo DeJerry took on Shang Ju Chen, also known as Jerry Shang. And Jerry Shang uh, fought off some match points to get that victory over in Hong Kong, too. So, But we're not in Hong Kong today watching this match. We're in Brisbane, Australia. I'm interested in what you guys think or what you guys would rank Pliskova and Osaka as far as hardcore WTA players. I th if, if you're asking me, since I posed the question I answered first, Osaka is the more accomplished hardcore player um, and kind of more accomplished hard player in general because she does have the four Grand Slams and Pliskova unfortunately doesn't have any. But where would you guys put Pliskova as far as hardcore prowess in women's tennis? Will you think she'd be top 10? I think she has a Rome title. I know she has a Rome title. I shouldn't say think. She has a Rome title. She has a Rome final. I believe she has a Wimbledon final. 
She may have some other titles, maybe an Eastbourne, and she has a whole heap of hardcore titles too. So she can kind of play on everything. It's just her her results over the past two seasons or so from Pliskova has not been has not been great. And this is her first match of the season. She hasn't come out glittering. That first service game had three double faults. That's definitely not how you want to start a uh, tennis season, I wouldn't imagine. And Osaka has a game point here. So to convert, or excuse me, to consolidate that break. As I'm talking about Pliskova, she hits a backhand return winner. <laughs> hey, Ghosty. Among Pliskovas, she's the best of them all. I think I was listening to a podcast. I'm always listening to a podcast, Ghosty, where somebody said that Carolina Pliskova, who we're watching today, her twin sister, Christina, who's the lefty, Christina Pliskova, was supposed to be the better one. I, I feel like I've heard that somewhere before on a podcast. Great forehand exchange from the women. Uh, forehand flies from Osaka. We're at deuce on her service game. Two love in the first set. Oh, I, I meant to mention uh, Naomi Osaka's gear and specifically her strings. I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's a different color on her strings. And small things like that do actually make a difference as far as like how the strings react to the tennis ball, the spin they produce, the control you get, all of that stuff. And I think she's either back to a really old string or just trying something new because this string is probably a Yonix I would imagine it's a Yonic string because that's her major uh, sponsorship. But it's like a greenish goldish color now. And it wasn't always like that. Funny enough, Ghosty, Ghosty's asking who had the better return with only one match under the belt, Osaka or Nadal. I watched a good bit of Osaka's opening match against Tamara Korpas. That was New Year's Eve here in the States. And she looked good. She had a little trouble closing, but I can imagine that would be tough. But I didn't watch a single live ball of Nadal's because that was like 2.30 a.m. where I am in the States. And although I love Nadal and to a certain extent Dominic Team, um, I wasn't geared up for that one. I wasn't geared up for that one. But I did see some highlights in Nadal, and Nadal looked good. So, But while I've been talking, Pliskova got a break back. Or one of the breaks, not one, the break back. So she's right at the ship as I was ready to kind of count her off a little bit. Osaka gave her a couple of free points and she got that break back. <laughs> Ass crack of the morning. <laughs> this is a family show, Ghosty, I think. Some of the tennis channel commercials are so funny. I don't know if you guys are watching on like Sky Sports or whatever miscellaneous way that people watch tennis, but some of the commercials are so funny. Let's look at some other live scores from today while we're on this changeover. I was watching the score of one of the matches in Auckland. Oh, and it's it's getting really thick. Uh, the matchup of the Wongs, they're not related, but Wang Ziyu, left-hander from China, and Wang Zhenyu, right-hander from China. Wang Zhenyu, the right-hander, is a top 40 player, I believe, and she made the fourth round or so, maybe quarters of the U.S. Open that just passed. Uh, they're in a five-all in the third set battle. So that's interesting. Ugo Umber, the number four seed on the ATP tournament in Brisbane, is up 3-1 against Alex Mickelson. Yeah, some good matches going on right now. So let's get back to Osaka and Pliskova. 
if my screen would go back to the <laughs> the just the plisk of a match, I would appreciate that tennis channel. You don't have to they don't have to bombard me as much as they do to get TC plus. I have access to it. <laughs> Ghosty, yes, I did I did read that. Wang is one of the most common surnames in China. So they're not related. It's just a common surname. Like I, I would imagine Smith or Williams is a common surname in America. Something like that. Mm. Pliskova's bandage on her wrist is really worrisome to me because it's off her off wrist. It's on her left hand as, as she just hits an ace. So I'm guessing everything is fine with it now. It's two all. That was her best game of the match so far. I'm interested to know like what's actually going on with that. Is it maybe she uses so much wrist on her backhand? I don't know. What do you guys think about Pliskova? I, I have to be honest. I hardly think about her. Um, unless she has made her way to the final eight or final four or so, or the final of a, of a tournament, she's hardly ever on my radar as somebody to watch or like somebody to hand out a fantasy trophy to. Um, but she's a really good player. She has a good resume. I think she has 16 WTA titles, obviously former world number one, two grand slam finals under her belt. Do you guys think that there's a two week period in one of the four slams where she could make another final run. And then once you get to a final, it's kind of just rolling the balls out and seeing who swings the best on that day. Do you guys think she could make another final? I'm interested. I don't think she can. I guess I'm kind of counting her out there, but I'm interested what you guys that are watching think about Pliskova. Yes, this is my kind of tennis. Aces and return winners. Osaka up 3-2 with an ace to close out that game. The longest game of the match, we're 22 minutes into the match. The longest game was definitely that uh, third game with five or so break points from Osaka. <laughs> I do hardly think of Fliskov. I'm sorry. She's not my favorite. She's not the person that makes me turn on my television. You know, lately, if I can, I mean, we're, we're on a change of ends now, so I feel like this is a perfect time for me to tangent into something. Lately, I've been getting a lot of flack for um, saying who I don't care for on the tour or like saying who I like to watch and who I don't like to watch or who I'm indifferent about when it comes to somebody like Pliskova. And I always think that's interesting because the internet is such a, cool place sometimes it's a cool and can be a cruel place at the same time because the moment that you have a difference of opinion especially in the, the land of tennis it's almost like people turn really really personal as if that player is like a extension of your family or something and maybe that might be how that is wired in your head but just because i personally um using Pliskova for an example, don't think of her often, doesn't mean that I am like some awful hater from the Mecca of Haterville. <laughs> I just I just don't rate her that high personally. We all I think that's the beauty of tennis and beauty of sports in general is that there's options galore for you to kind of find your footing as far as a fan. And Pliskova has never made me kind of jump up out of my seat and be a fan like Osaka has. Osaka has had plenty of moments where I've been like, wow, that's some good tennis and off-court moments, like on-court interviews, all that kind of stuff that have endeared me to her. Pliskova, not so much. And I don't think I should be burned at the stake for, for saying that. It's not like I'm, you know, cursing her, <laughs> her mom or her future child. I would not do anything like that. I just, you know. Her tennis isn't her tennis isn't gold star worthy in the uh, house of miles. <laughs> That's all. Ran over. Ah, we have some breaking news here at Talking Tennis for Australian Open, which starts in about two weeks' time. 
the latest player to withdraw from the tournament is Lauren Davis of the United States, which means Emirata Kanu gets into the main draw and doesn't have to play qualifying, which has been an interesting kind of topic on the internet because I personally would have not minded if uh, Radakanu went through qualifying because if you look at the results, if you look at her best results, her best results have kind of come from her going through qualifying. So it may not have been a bad thing. We'll see if that goes in her favor. But as of, as of now, she's into the main draw by way of Lauren Davis withdrawing. So... If you're a Radakanu fan, it's time to cheer. Your girl's in the main draw of the Aussie Open. Osaka has a little bit of an opening window here at 15.30, and it's snuffed away by Pliskova. Some more big serving. Her serve has just been so rangy in this match so far. That was that was almost a double right there, but she she narrowly escaped it. And was able to dictate with the forehand and put away a short ball from Osaka. We're at 30 all. But her her serve is making me kind of hold my breath a little bit because I'm not sure if it's going to be the traditional serve that we kind of associate with Pliskova because, I mean, she's been a big server most of, if not all, of her career. But, you know, you don't associate three double faults in a game with Pliskova necessarily. So that's interesting. She's getting a little frustrated with it, too. She's kind of swinging her racket after first serve misses. I'd be frustrated, too, if I had hit three three double faults in a game. <laughs> She's trying to get her ball tossed a little bit back behind her head to get some more kick, and that's only allowing Osaka to jump over it even more and create, you know, more dictating from the middle of the court. Another break point for Osaka here. The depth and sting on these shots is, are great. Let's see if Pliskova can fend off another break point. First serve. Four in the middle of the court. She doesn't do enough with. Steady rally. Oh, wow. I love how low Osaka gets for her backhand. Short ball. Osaka incoming and puts it away with the forehand. Break for Osaka 4-2. That was a great point. Probably the best point of the match. Osaka was moving very well. She was staying low on her backhands, which I love to see. And anytime there's something short that she can take a full swing on, she takes a full cut, and it's pretty much point over with. Her racket hit speed on that forehand is, man, something. Almost half an hour in, Osaka has gotten up a brick again and will try to consolidate like she didn't last time. Anybody a fan of the color on Naomi? I'm a fan. I think the yellow looks pretty nice on her. I'm catching up on some comments here. Go see, you saw an old video of Radakanu swinging a kettlebell. <laughs> she's not doing it safely. That may have contributed to some of the wrist issues she's had. Emma may have had ranking protection, but even with the protected ranking she had, I still think she may have had to go through qualifying. I think that's what I read. Like, she has it, but it's still not that high. So... Nice picture of Osaka here on the screen in her yellow and black. I think she looks pretty good. She's playing well, too, by the way. She's the one dictating. If Osaka is getting a short ball, it's pretty much being uh, creamed and game over with. Terry saying she was 103. Oh, Mira Andreva's competing. I don't know how I missed that. She's playing Ocean Dudin. They're playing a, a, a battle. 
splitting sets. And Osaka has two game points to go up 5-2. And she... Oh, that was a point before. Sorry, I'm behind. <laughs> There's just something, there's something, hmm. It, there's a sting. Uh, there's a sting in Osaka's shots and a pep in her step that was not there in 2022. For I think she's been pretty open in saying that, you know, her, her relationship with tennis wasn't at its best. And maybe we just saw that for the larger part of 2022. But there's definitely a little bit more pep in her step in the middle of points and, and power in her shots and she's up five two so it's on display today so far on board welcome to the chat osaka hit bar hit hard the ball is great to see her very comfortable i agree it is nice to see her comfortable in her own skin and playing the kind of tennis we know she can play she's a grand slam champion a world number one former world number one and it's, it's great for the sport altogether when she's playing her best and is consistently on the tour. So I'm happy to have her back for sure. <laughs> Sean, Osaka is a heavyweight in the best way. I agree. I agree. Ghosty, you're asking how's New Orleans. It's great. It's one of my favorite times. Um, well, it's my favorite time weather-wise in New Orleans because it's that wonderful period where everybody's gearing up for a Mardi Gras and it's winter. So like Louisiana winter is definitely not the winter of like Denver or somewhere in Poland, but it's cold for me and I love it. <laughs> I think it was on New Year's Eve. It was like in the 40s or 50s Fahrenheit, which I love. So Do you guys, somebody asked me this in my Twitter spaces the other, the, today, actually. I'm, technically, I'm hosting a Twitter space as we speak, but I've, I've, um, <laughs> I've uh, handed over the reins to some trusted co-host of mine on Twitter. So if you're wondering how I'm hosting this YouTube watch along and Twitter space, that's how. But somebody in the space asked, where would you put Osaka's likelihood of winning the Australian Open if she wins Brisbane. And I'm kind of a slow your horses kind of person. Uh, I think it would be remarkable if Osaka comes back and not only wins this tournament and Australia, I think that would be an incredible feat. I just don't see both of those things happening. If she wins Brisbane, I don't think she has... I don't want to say... It. I don't want to like knock her but I, I i don't see her putting it all together for three weeks in a row that quickly after not playing for a year my mind doesn't allow that to compute very easily because tennis is just ever changing but uh maybe one or the other <laughs> if she wins here i would not i wouldn't i would Imagine she's going to get in the second week of Australia, but I would imagine there's going to be a dip of form. If she doesn't win in Brisbane, maybe she saves her best tennis in Australia for the Australian Open. So, yeah, winning both is a high ask. Winning one, who knows? I'm sure she would rather win the Australian again. And those courts have been kind to her. They really have. She's saved match points on those courts. She's lifted trophies. So we'll see. We will see. Wang Ziyu, the lefty um, from China, got the win over Wang Jinyu, 7-6 in the third, by the way, for those that were kind of score watching that match. Oh, my gosh. That forehand cross court from Osaka is – anybody – I don't. I would love to see if anybody agrees with me about this. Are the acoustics in Brisbane some of the best in tennis? I'm not sure if the roof is closed or not, but I always am enamored by the acoustics in Brisbane. The acoustics and the camera work. The camera angle is really lovely. There's never really a bad like view. 
and the acoustics are great. I don't know if I was ever, if I ever get a chance to go to Australia and I ever wanted to like celebrate the new year, I would definitely get tickets to Brisbane for sure. Seems like a good watch all the way around. And if it's a good watch on television, I can imagine it would be a good watch in uh, person. So. <laughs> Ghosty. <laughs> good one. Pliskova has a game point to kind of stop a little bit of the bleeding and, and get on the board 3-5. Oh, that was almost a crack of a return from Osaka. See, this is what I like. I like I like tennis that makes me say "ooh" and "ah" and "ouch" and "wow." That's what that's what first strike tennis does. I love it. I love it. Makes me happy. If you guys have seen any of my tweets, I wasn't necessarily thrilled to get twenty twenty four tennis started. I personally needed it. Need needed it. I needed about another week or two to kind of miss tennis because I I didn't miss it. I love tennis, but we can all touch and agree that it is always on and always happening almost 365 days a year. So I kind of wanted a little bit of a break, but this match is helping. I'm enjoying the match so far. And Osaka's level is great. She's serving for the first set at 5-3. Man, the acoustics off just Osaka's serve is enough to make you a fan of hers, in my opinion. It sounds like a bullet. Well, maybe bullet isn't the right word. It just sounds like a very aggressive thud. <laughs> that I would want my serve to sound like that. I want my I would want my serve to sound imposing, like Osaka's serve sounds. Yeah. She's closing out. I'm sure she's asking where some of these serves were when she was trying to close out her first round match the other day, but she has set points. Some confident serving from Osaka. And some big swing from Pliskova. When Pliskova connects, she can definitely hit the ball hard herself. It is very good to see Osaka um, smiling and just, you know, looking a little bit lighter on the court. A little bit of pressure Pliskov was applying here. Two set points erased. Let's see what happens on, on the third one. Mm, Pliskov hit a great backhand Return down the middle that Osaka thought was going long, but it clipped the tape. Clipped the, the line, not the tape. This is my first match of the season, guys, okay? I'm a little rusty. <laughs> Pluskova gives her a gift, and it's first set, Naomi Osaka, 6-3. Pretty entertaining first set. Some big babe tennis in the house, and I enjoyed that. Stephanie Hughes. Hi, Stephanie. Welcome to the chat. Australian TV media probably does the best job of covering the Australian leg during summer. It's thorough and on TV every day. I can imagine because their digital content for someone that's in the States is wonderful. They even do a good job when it's not their season. If there's any player that is kind of having a, a resurgence or just a surge in their career, the Australian Open does a pretty good job of uploading content around that player almost any time of the year. So like when, I think when Muhova was making her French Open run, I would see updates from the Australian Open YouTube channel about random highlights of Muhova, like just capturing the trending nature of a player's name. They do really well at that. Better than all the other slams, I think. So I definitely give them kudos for that. And the Australian Open graphics are always good. They are constantly posting on socials. Like they're, like I said, their whole digital content um, package is great. It's really good. 
Oh, wow, Stephanie, that's really cool. Which part of Australia, Stephanie? Because I was just, I was kind of mind boggled a little bit the other day when I realized that the United Cup is being competed in two cities on two opposite coasts of Australia, Perth and Sydney. And there's a travel day on some day to get the players from Perth to Sydney to play the uh, semifinals and final. So I'm wondering which coach. You're... Sydney. Okay. Ha have you been to the Sydney tournament or the United Cup? That's awesome, Stephanie. Sydney seems cool. Sydney's actually on my list of, I don't think I've ever said this on Talking Tennis, but I would like to go and visit now that I've, I actually just checked my passport today. My passport is valid until 2029. So by 2029, I would have liked to visit at least once for a couple of days or so, every city that has hosted the Olympics, starting with 1996 in Atlanta. Well, I lived in Atlanta for a couple of years, so that one doesn't really count. Well, it counts because I've already visited and lived there. So the next one is Sydney. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily have to go in order, but I want to go to Sydney, Athens, Beijing, London, Rio, and Tokyo, and then Paris because that's this year. So yeah, I have to hit all of those cities. That's my personal goal. Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Wait, okay, okay, okay. Has anyone dived deep into the naming of Osaka's baby, Shy? I think that is adorable because one of the adjectives you would use to describe Osaka is Shy. And especially when she first came on the scene, she's gotten a little bit better as far as navigating life in the public and life with a mic in front of your, your mouth all the time. But her naming her daughter Shy is cute and also um, perfect at the same time. I'm pretty sure it's spelled S-H-A-I. I don't think it's spelled S-H-Y, <laughs> like the word Shy. Sorry, I could hear chaos on my Twitter space. Stephanie, if you're new to the Talking Tennis community and or like my commentary, feel free to subscribe to the community here. Maybe consider becoming a member and follow me on Twitter, also known as X, at Tuned Into Tennis. I have a podcast. I'm always talking about tennis and tuned in. Ashley, I am not the chaos, okay? <laughs> I'm a moderator of chaos. I don't mind being amidst chaos, but I am not the chaos. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, Sean. Pliskova opens up the second set with a hold of serve. Osaka to serve in the second set. I'm sure if I were to check the poll and the uh, win percentage on the WTA website or whatever kind of data analyst they use, um, I would imagine because of that first set win by Osaka that she would be the, the favorite person to win. Does anyone remember when Osaka and Pliskova played in the semis of Australia? That was a pretty good match. I was not a happy camper that day. Um, 2019 was a weird year, especially the beginning of it, because we were off the heels of what for me was a... Um, dramatic U.S. Open, to say the least. And Osaka was squarely in the middle of that. 
And right after that, uh, well, not right after, but the next Grand Slam after the U.S. Open is obviously Australia. And Pliskova and Serena Williams played in the quarterfinals. And Pliskova came back from a couple of match points to beat Serena. So needless to say, I was not a happy camper or rooting for Pliskova in that semifinal against Osaka. But I also wasn't necessarily thrilled with... uh, Osaka either at the time <laughs> I've grown to love her because she's you know been open about some things that I think are really important but at the time I was like oh Osaka you're ending Serena's career here <laughs> stop it <laughs> but she's cool now she's cool Ghosty's asking me a very pertinent question here, guys. Miles, you have one week left to live. Oh, gosh. I hope no one ever tells me that. Um, And some rich guy wants to send you to the city of your choice for a farewell adventure. Of those you listed, which one is tops? Oh, of the cities I listed that I wanted to visit? Oh. That's a really good question. Um, Because I would would pick... Either one of them, either one of those Olympic hosting cities, I think for aesthetic purposes, I would pick Athens. From what I've seen, Athens is absolutely beautiful. And I would like, you know, if I had a week to live, why not be able to take beautiful pictures and most beautiful scenery? It wouldn't be Atlanta, I can tell you that much. It would not be Atlanta. (laughs) Definitely not Atlanta. Um, Probably not Rio. Because I just don't know enough about that city to make that a confident choice. So I think it would be Athens. Close second, Sydney. Yep. Sydney scares me, though, because every time I see a video on the Internet of, like, wild animals in Australia, those animals are extra wild. And I'm a dog guy, not a wild animal kind of person. (laughs) So if I saw a snake out in the land just or a a kangaroo like trying to choke me out, I probably would piss my pants (laughs) or worse. (laughs) Osaka has three break points again here. Pliskova has gifted her another game. If she consolidates and gets one of these break points, she's returning. Well, too, she's making it hard for Pliskova. She's putting her racket on almost everything. I mean, Pliskova has to hit a great serve for it to not come back. So, yeah. I have a question for the chat. Um, Since we're watching a uh, new mom compete, how do you guys digest some of the content that the WTA puts out about the WTA and motherhood? Because I've been seeing some pushback Um, from certain people online saying that like, yes, it should be mentioned, but it shouldn't be a part of their entire storyline that they're, uh, you know, a a wife or mom competing on the tour. And I think that is, I'm not sure how to feel about that all of the way. Cause I, I can see how reading those headlines can be a little like, How do I put this? Mm. It can just, I can see how somebody would just not receive it well for whatever reason they, they have. I can see that. I can, I can, I can make my mind get to that. But to me, it doesn't bother me because I feel like having a child, getting married, those are things that um, are life changing. And typically we've seen in tennis, a change in the demeanor, the, focus one way or the other when someone has a life-changing moment like that. I mean, take it like this. When you have, um, I'm speaking from somebody that lives in the States here. Um, If you have a nine to five job and you have benefits associated with that nine to five job, if you have a child or uh, get married, have a spouse, all of those things, those are considered life-changing events. So you can then change the benefits Um, like insurance and health insurance, life insurance, all of those things because of those life-changing events. So I feel like it's okay if tennis commentators and tennis media kind of uh, 
egg up the fact that a mom is coming back to the tour because it is a life changing thing. So, yeah, it doesn't bother me, but I've seen it bother people. Like, why do we keep talking about that? It's like, well, it happened. And maybe we wouldn't talk about it if the person wasn't so successful before motherhood. But now we're interested to see how their life is going to look and how their com competition is going to look and what their athlete or what the athleticism looks like post child, you know? So, but I do get that the men don't really get talked about in that way. Like if a, if a man, if a man fathers a child and comes back to the tour or whatever sport he's playing, it doesn't get no one. I don't, I hardly read the, the, the headline father comes back to win Super Bowl or something like that. It doesn't really go that way. <laughs> it doesn't really go that way. So I see, I see the, double standard, I guess. Suskova was able to get out of trouble uh, in that game, by the way, and uh, block off three break points. So maybe that may be a small uh, game changer in this match. So we'll see. Am I missing some comments? Should I refresh? I don't want to refresh and get knocked off of the stream, but I feel like I'm missing some comments or you guys are just quiet and listening to my wonderful commentary. If that's the case, then I'll just keep talking. <laughs> oh, God, you guys, if you aren't um, subscribed, to Talking Tennis or subscribe to me on YouTube at Tuned Into Tennis or wherever my social media candor allows you to subscribe or follow or whatever. You're going to see a lot of this guy here. This Stanley Cup. I got this for Christmas. It is. It's 30 ounces or 887 milliliters. And my water intake has like tripled. It was never bad. My water intake was never bad, but this this mug is cool and it keeps my water cold and I appreciate it. This is not sponsored content. <laughs> I was hurt. This was a gift. <laughs> but if anybody has a hookup with Stanley, please let them contact me. I would love to. Let's look at some other scores while Osaka and Pliskova are not the center of attention at Tennis Channel. <clears throat> Let's see. All right, live. Ugo and Bears up a set. Also in Brisbane, the ATP event. Garcia and Paulini is underway with Garcia trying to consolidate her break in the first set. Hubie Hercash and Zhang Zhijin are warming up for the United Cup. I'm very interested in what Zhang Zhijin does this year. I love the way he plays and strikes the ball. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name at any point. I'm trying my best. <laughs> uh, who else? And Emma Navarro, a name that some may want to get to know this year. She is a... 20 something American. She's the daughter of the gentleman that owns the Credit One Charleston Open that's on the WTA tour. So you may have seen her get a wild card or, or two or three into that event, but she's now a top 35 player and will probably be seated for the Australian Open. So that's another name to watch. Speaking of Australians, Daria Gavrilova or this app this app hasn't changed her name, but I'm pretty sure her last name is now Seville because she's married. She's going up against Anastasia Potapova, also in Brisbane. And also uh, another singles match that's happening in Brisbane is Veronica Kudermatova, the number six seed, is up against Anna Karolina Schmidlova. So a lot of action going on. It always feels sometimes shouldn't say it always feels sometimes it sometimes feels in australia at the beginning of the year there's so much tennis going on and i unfortunately only have two good eyes so i can't watch all of it <laughs> so it's good to, it's good to be back though it's definitely good to be back
How have I missed some of these comments? What is, what is going on today? Yeah, Jane, in regards to like how moms do it on the tour, I have no idea. I have no, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine, I can't imagine giving birth. Well, I can't imagine doing what Osaka has done. Osaka announced her pregnancy in January of 2023, gave birth in July of 2023. And right before we went to 2024, she won a WTA level match. <laughs> like it was, I think it was the 1st of January in Australia, but it was the 31st of December in the States. So that's crazy that she accomplished all of those things in literally the same span of 365 days. That's crazy. <laughs> Stephanie, were you on the the tour at one point? I think that's so cool. You're saying you can't I can't I can remember having to travel to remote places to play ITF tournaments, turn to WTA points, Tunisia or here in the US, Arkansas. <laughs> West Texas West Texas is a very remote place. People talk about Texas being big and it is, but there's a certain triangle of cities, Houston, Austin, uh and Dallas make up that triangle and then San Antonio is a pretty populous place, but that west part, the closer you get to like New Mexico and Arizona, that <laughs> no one ever talks about that part of Texas. It's just wide open space. So more power to anybody that lives out there. <laughs> Seville did change it. Oh, wait. Did Seville change? Did she change her name back to Gavrilova? So did the app get it right? Hmm. Pliska was also married, and she doesn't go by her married name now. I looked it up the other day. She's been married for like a year or two or three, maybe. Something like that. But she didn't actually change her name, her, her last name. I guess because when you become a a successful athlete, your name becomes an entity and brand of its own. So it's hard to, not hard, but it's, I can imagine that there might be some hurdles to change it. I don't know, but it's possible. For instance, Fidelina is married to Monfi, but like, you know, when she gets announced on, on court, she's not Alina Monfi. She's still Alina Fidelina. So I think it's a personal choice for the woman. Who knows? Oh, wow, Stephanie, that's really, really cool. Are there any highlights of you playing on YouTube, Stephanie? I'd love to see. A couple more errors are starting to creep into the Osaka racket. Uh, there's a critical point here at 30 all, 2-3. I would imagine Osaka does not want to get broken here after having most of the momentum. <laughs> Before YouTube. Osaka's kick serve in the, what, what court is that? Her kick serve in the ad court is a kicker, to say the least. And it's so short in the box, too. I've missed her. I really have. I know I'm not supposed to be biased, but, you know. <sighs> She's been, I mean, sometimes I hear commentators say they've missed certain players. I don't think you should go to jail for that. 
Mitsu, I think it's fair for me to say Osaka has her energy has been missed on tour. Yeah, it's the forehand for me. Too good. Too good. Hit it, being able to be that offensive off of your second serve is incredible. And to be able to place a forehand in the corner like that is hard. Ashley, I agree. Her kick serve is kind of underrated. It's definitely helped her win those four grand slams for sure. Yeah, well, I'm talking about Naomi serve and Pliskova makes mincemeat out of it right there. <laughs> Funny enough, Osaka and Pliskova both are at 19 winners apiece in this match. My kind of stats. Litter up the stat sheet. Yay! Is anyone a fan of Coco Vandeweghe's commentary? Because I can hear her in my ear on Tennis Channel. And I'm wondering how, how other people feel about her commentary. She wasn't necessarily the most popular WTA figure. So maybe she maybe that'll change in the commentary booth. Osaka isn't a typical mom. She's a cool mom. <laughs> Ashley, I'm imagining that she's all right is for Coco Vandewey's commentary. <laughs> Terry's not a fan. Ashley says nothing special. <laughs> I don't know, Ghosty. I guess I, I guess because I am never going to physically carry a baby, having a baby is still something that sometimes warps my mind. Like, wow, there was nothing, and then there was something, and you and you carried that something for nine months, and now it's like living and breathing, and you have to take care of it, like legally, <laughs> forever. Well, yeah, forever. I was going to say at least until eighteen, but. Once you have a child, it's your child forever. So, and all of us are children. We're somebody's child. I think that's that's crazy. Sean, I get what you're saying. They, Sean's saying, yeah, they could say it once, but media ruin every story by mentioning it every few seconds. <laughs> Man, some of these returns are top notch. Yeah, there's nothing you really can do if Osaka is hitting her backhand return that way. It's so compact. And I mean, by the time you have really settled down from leaping into your serve, the return is past you. So what do you do? Oh, well, you hit an ace like Puskova just did. <laughs> Yeah, two back-to-back -back aces for Pliskova to close out the game. She's up 4-3. She's definitely serving a lot better than she did in the first set. So we'll see if this – well, we're in the business end of the set now, so we'll see who gets tight first. Ghosty, are you still on your rant? <laughs> I don't think a Thanksgiving dinner baby counts as an actual baby, Ghosty. Close. I would imagine it's uncomfortable, but I don't – uncomfortable but I don't think it counts as an actual baby. <laughs> if that's the case, and I have a baby often. <laughs> Terry, did you deliver? <laughs> Where are you? I'm, well, this is, 
consider this my 2024 refresher. But Sean, Ghosty, Terry, Ashley, I think Ashley, I'm pretty sure you're in uh Alabama. I'm pretty sure of that. But Ghosty, Sean, Terry, where are you guys? I, I was gonna say calling in from, but where are you guys in the chat from in the world? Let me know. Refresh my memory. <laughs> Ashley, how did we get here? <laughs> I'm from Sunny Cairns. Goes to Google. Oh, actually, does that mean Delaware East Coast? Ghosties on the West Coast. Oh, wait, that's what I was doing. Googling Cairn, Cairns. Oh, wait, is that in Australia, Terry? Is that in Queensland? That's what Google Map is telling me. Oh, Osaka a little wild there with that forehand. Yeah, this game here, 15 all, 3 4. Osaka definitely would want to hold here. If she doesn't, she's going to be having to break to stay in the set. And she hasn't been in that position yet. So maybe she has been in that position the other day in her match against Corpash. But Corpash, Tamara Corpash, and Carolyn Pliskova are of different calibers. So. Terry, I had no idea you were in Australia on the Great Barrier Reef. That is so cool. Thanks for always engaging. I feel like my content comes out at the worst possible time for Australians. Because <laughs> my, well, no, I'm more of a, I'm, I'm more of a night owl. So the stuff I like, my best work comes around this time. And it's like, what, midday for you in Australia? So maybe that, maybe that does work. I don't know. Jane, yes, Hubie is competing. I think Hubie's playing against Zhang Zhijin, which is an interesting matchup. <laughs> Osaka serve is getting her out of, in a lot of getting her out of a lot of trouble here. Ghosty, are you part of the Hubie Hive? I like Hubie. I've been liking him since Miami 2021, pretty much. Some great serving and poor returning from Pliskova gets her out of trouble, and it's for all. Pliskova is not returning her best. I mean, when she's getting the when she's connecting, she's connecting, but Osaka's serving well. She's serving her, she's finding her corners. She just closed out that game with an ace and we're at four all, officially in the business end of the second set. <laughs> Ghosty. <laughs> Is that a tattoo on Pliskova's back? Or is that part of her chain? I can't tell. I know she, had, I know she has a tattoo on her arm, but I can't tell if that's one on her back now. I think it's part of her chain. <laughs> Has anyone ever hit with the um, official balls of the Australian Open from Dunlop? I'm wondering how you guys like feel about those because I might order a case for me to play here in New Orleans. Sean, Hubie always walks a bit funny. <laughs> I think someone called him Pigeon Toad, I've heard. Uh, so that's just his walk. Oh. P 
Pliska was serving ahead is a huge advantage here in the second set because Osaka's always going to have to serve from this point out to stay in this in the set. And that is pressure, you know, especially if you haven't been in that predicament. And Osaka hasn't been in that predicament in a while. That was in. Was that a second serve age from Pliskova? It looked well out. Wow. She's up 5 4 in the second set, though. Stephanie, you play with the AO balls made for hard courts and hot weather. Oh, that's perfect for me. I love hard courts and my game likes hot weather. I personally don't like hot weather. <laughs> it's funny because I prefer it to be cool to cold when I play tennis because I, I I don't like feeling st sticky and icky and sweaty. But my game, I've said this before on this channel before, but imagine me playing like a male version of uh Kvitova. I'm kind of similar to Osaka and Pliskova here. I like big serves and big returns, and that's how I play. So in when it's hotter, those things are more effective, but I don't feel my best when it's hot. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so hot. And then New Orleans is like unbearably unbearably hot sometimes. So I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird juxtaposition. Oh, speaking of Kavitova, Kavitova's pregnant. She announced her pregnancy a couple of days ago or a day ago, something like that. I'm happy for her. I don't know if she's going to come back to the professional tour or not, but if she had made that decision already, she probably would have announced it while she announced the pregnancy. It would have been a retirement slash pregnancy announcement. So we'll see. She's already in her 30s. She's accomplished so much in her in her game. I wouldn't blame her if she decides not to come back after having a child, but it'd be kind of fun to see her on tour again too. So, oh, by the way, speaking of Hubie, as I see him as tennis channel does a glance over to his other matches in Australia, he's kind of rocking the beard scruff look. And I like it. I like that on Hubie. Good looking Hubie. All right. We're back inside the match. Osaka versus Pliskova. Osaka serving a 4-5 in the second set to stay in this set. Another short ball put away from Osaka. If it's short on her forehand side, it's being put away. I don't think I've seen her miss too many of those put away shots on her forehand. That's a good sign. Sometimes those are the ones that kind of show the rust because you have to set your feet you have to produce all the pace and sometimes those are the shots that players come back and struggle with um because it's more you have more time to think than if you're just reacting to you know a ground stroke rally so a big point here at 30 all four or five for osaka it could be a set point incoming it could be a game point incoming Huge point here. Let's see what happens here. Hmm. Oh, wow. Great clutch point from Osaka there to get to game point. Serve out wide, backhand into the open court. Pliskova not fleet of foot and can't get to it and do much with it. Excuse me. And she holds. We're at five all. Pliskova's going to want some of these returns back. If there was anything I could tell Pliskova, um, maybe develop a chip, 
a chip return just to kind of get the ball back in play. I mean, you're you're going to have to do some running if if you do a chip. So maybe that's why she doesn't even opt for it because you know lateral movement is not her forte. But it would help to at least ask the question of Osaka to get some of these returns back in play because so many of the points that have gone Osaka's way, the serve hasn't even gotten in play, or it's been an outright ace. So that's something I would tell Pliskova. But at this point in her in her career, I'm pretty sure she's content with what she does well. <laughs> Ghosty, that's a great question in the chat. A great question, actually. Ghosty, when you say who is more likely to win a big title again out of Team Chilich or Dimitrov, how big are you talking? Because in some corners of the world, a ATP 500 is big. In other parts of the world, a Grand Slam is big. And I would imagine that a Grand Slam is beyond all three of them at this point. But a 1,000, probably not for Dimitrov, considering he was just in a 1000 final in Paris. And I think a couple of those 1000s that the men have, was that a footfall from Pliskova on a second serve? Oh, wow, it was. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah, she did. That was a footfall. It showed it on slow motion. She started over the paint. Wow, that's crazy. I don't, from what I've seen from team, I have to see team win a tournament again before I can put him in the contention of winning a 1000 or a slam. I just, his, his game does not have the same punch. His forehand doesn't have it. His backhand doesn't have it. None of his game has the same punch. Whereas Dimitrov, he's so athletically gifted. And if he can fight like the nerves that come along with, maybe this is my one opportunity. I have to make the most of it. Cause that can be a nerve wracking place to be, to know that you don't have that many opportunities and you have to take advantage of them. I can see Dimitrov kind of finagling his way through a match or at least making it awkward for his opponent with his slices and stuff like that team and Chilich, I, I can't see it Chilich might hit himself out of the court and i can't even see dominic team getting to like the final really so sorry team hi za 92 yeah i don't believe team will win anything over a 250 until he wins a 250. If team like blasts his way to a 250 and it actually catches my attention, I mean, not, not, not one of those 250s after Wimbledon. I mean, a 250 in route to a slam, then maybe I might change my opinion, but based off what I've seen over the past two years now, it's not happening for team. It may happen for Dimitrov based off of recency bias and the fact that he's played well in 2023 and he just beat Andy Murray again, which sorry, Andy Murray fans. Um, he's also not winning a big title anytime soon. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's not happening. I do like Marin Cilic. Marin Cilic was the second coming for me of a guy I liked way back in the day. Another Croatian, um, Mario Ancic. I used to love Mario Ancic back in the day. I have no idea why. Well, I have some. I have my reasons, but I really enjoyed his game. <laughs> this was this was a Mario Ancic stand account at one point. I actually think Ghosty, since you're adding Murray, Andy Murray, and Stan Rinka to the mix, if we add 
all of those players or both of those players to the mix. I think Warenka has the firepower to disrupt enough players to actually win a big title. I just am not sure about the endurance and stamina to let it go the seven matches. Because, I mean, realistically, he'd have to win six or seven matches at a matches 1,000 and obviously seven at a, at a slam. I don't know about that. But if he gets a good draw and he's healthy, it could happen. But that's a, that's a whole bunch of ifs, muts, and maybes. So, <laughs> go see. Oh, wow. That was a great turn from Tuskova. Yeah, Ashley, I was mentioning that at the top of the stream, uh, just talking about some 2024 wild results already. Chilich lost a match where he gave up nine match points. A 2024 loss to Jan Leonard Struff is not terrible because Jan Leonard Struff actually had some great moments in 2023. He got to the final of Madrid and final of Stuttgart. So that's not a terrible loss. It's just losing when you've had nine match points is rough. Very rough. I wouldn't want to talk to anybody for a couple of days. Maybe two days. Maybe. Some great ball striking again from Osaka to get us into a second set tie break. I wish I had a button I could press for like some cool graphics for tie break time. Or if I had like a jingle, if I was a really good jingle maker, I'd be like, it's tie break time. It's tie break time. <laughs> Sorry. I get corny when I'm here talking to myself, kind of. <laughs> I'm talking to you guys, but you guys aren't here. <laughs> Who's Daddy Eyebrows? It's Chillis Daddy Eyebrows? <laughs> or am I Daddy Eyebrows? You can't really see my eyebrows today with my hat. But for good reason, because I need a haircut. I know I'm bald, but I need to shave my head. <laughs> Ghost, you're calling 7-5 Osaka? Okay. Oh, Za92 saying 7-4 Osaka. That's a guess. Za92, where are you in the chat from? Please let me know. <laughs> Didn't Chilich have like a unibrow at one point? I feel like I vaguely remember that. They were like when the camera would zoom in on his 17 ball bounces, you would catch a glimpse of that unibrow. No shame in it. It happens. <laughs> Florida. Cool, cool. <laughs> oh, I was going to say that's the safest rally they've played in a while until Osaka tried to pull the trigger. Hey, Za92, your family is from Louisiana. That's a good family. I bet they're good looking too. We make them pretty well here in Louisiana. <laughs> All right, Osaka on the board here at one two. The those of you who guessed uh, seven four Osaka are in danger. Jonathan Hernandez, welcome to the chat. Jonathan Hernandez, are you an actor? That sounds like an actor's name. He's asking who's winning. This tie break, I'm not sure. I think it could be anybody. Pliskova has been serving well enough in the second set, and Osaka definitely has been serving well throughout the match. And Pliskova's already up a mini break in this tie break, so it doesn't look too great for Osaka, really and truly. If it goes three guys, I want to take a quick uh, restroom break. Thanks to the Stanley. And it does look like it's going to go three at the moment. We'll see what happens. <laughs> I 
I've enjoyed the one-two punches in this match. So I feel like I haven't seen that enough on the WTA tour. I'm trying to think of who, well, Swiatek does a one-two punch sometimes, um, but it's just not the same. It's It doesn't sting the way I feel like Osaka's one-two punch would make me say, ouch. Swiatek has a one-two punch in a different kind of way. Za, there's a canopy kind of feature in Brisbane. And the roof is closed. They just showed a picture of it. But you can still see the nature or <laughs> the clouds. It's kind of like a canopy roof. You can still see parts of it, but it is closed. Three, four, or five, three now. Did you guys watch that match the other day with Dimitrov, who like, or Dimitrov, who broke like four of his strings in his racket? Or not four of his strings. He had four separate rackets that all broke strings midpoint. I thought that was interesting. And maybe the humidity in Briz might have something to do with that, maybe. Especially if his racket hasn't been hit with Brisbane humidity in quite a while. <laughs> oh, that's a great one-two punch from Pliskova. Mm, and now she has three set points. Let's see what Pliskova does here. And if Osaka can create more of a tension. Hmm. Things have gotten interesting in this match. I'm actually wouldn't I'm actually if if this goes three, I'm not surprised because a couple a lot of their matches have gone three. So Brisbane is hotter. Great point from Osaka to save one of these set points to get to 4-6. The, the length on her shots is really great. I, I kind of think Pliskova... I mean, it's kind of hard to say that somebody could sneak a set. Well, I guess if you sneak a set, it would be in a tie break. But it didn't feel like Pliskova was playing the better tennis in this tie in this second set. But yet she's won it in a tie break, and she lets out a good roar. This is her first match of the season, so maybe it took her a little while to kind of get in to gear. But it seems like she's there. Her serve has wavered. It's been a little rangy. She's definitely offered up some free points. But in that 50-minute second set, Pliskova gets the better of Osaka. So we're headed to a deciding third set. I am going to take a uh, quick break and be back to walk you guys through the third set. Does that sound okay? Blame it on the Stanley, okay? I'm trying to keep hydrated. That's we're in the Australian heat. Okay. Somebody has to stay hydrated. It's going to be me. Won't catch me passing out. <laughs> okay.
Thanks for tuning in to this watch along. While there's a break in play, here's a reminder to hit the like button, subscribe and click that notification bell. Your support helps to keep the channel going. While we're here, you can now become a member to enjoy perks including badges for the live chat, but also bonus material such as interviews with top players from both ATP and WTA tours. The membership link is pinned in the live chat. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So whether it be serves or volleys, forehands or backhands, serve bots or drop shots, we've got you covered. Whether that be via our website, talking-tennis.com, where you can read features and interviews from our top writers. Or if you prefer us in audio form, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Amazon or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. Remember, we offer you wall-to-wall coverage via our regular watch-alongs, magazine shows such as Nick's WTA Weekly or Damien and Mario's ATP version. Plus, we deliver top content from people on the ground, actually at the tournaments, so you get even nearer to the action. So... What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Uh, you've been to the French Open final. Your breakthrough, at least standout result at the beginning of your career, was on grass against Venus. Mm-hmm. You've been very solid on the hard courts. Mm-hmm. Is there a, a slam in particular that you go... I think that's if I'm going to get one, the first one mm-hmm. might come here, there, or where. Well, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> everyone, I'm like, I think this is the first one. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, obviously now going to the French, I, I do have a lot of confidence on the surface. Um, but I, I'm not really thinking about that. I feel like you know, in the past, I was, and it gave me some like defeats that I feel like I shouldn't have lost. Maybe, maybe more so in my head. So going in now, I mean, I feel like you know, everyone is kind of could be the one, but. Uh, I think I have to just take it a match at a time and, and, and just feel it out and, and, and enjoy it. I think when you focus too much on the destination, you uh, don't enjoy the journey there. So now I want to focus more on the journey. And, and you know, if the destination gets there, that's, that's, a, that's great. Thanks for tuning in to this watch along. While there's a break in play, here's a reminder to hit the like button, subscribe and click that notification bell. Your support helps to keep the channel going. While we're here, you can now become a member to enjoy perks including badges for the live chat, but also bonus material such as interviews with top players from both ATP and WTA tours. The membership link is pinned in the live chat. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So whether it be serves or volleys, forehands or backhands, serve bots or drop shots, we've got you covered. Whether that be via our website, talking-tennis.com, where you can read features and interviews from our top writers. Or if you prefer us in audio form, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Amazon or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. Remember, we offer you wall-to-wall coverage via our regular watch-alongs, magazine shows such as Nick's WTA Weekly or Damien and Mario's ATP version. Plus, we deliver top content from people on the ground, actually at the tournaments, so you get even nearer to the action. So... What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Um, hi, Novak. Um, 
I don't know if you saw what Vasek said uh, last night about uh, organizing and, and, and tennis could and should be even bigger than it already is. If only the people organizing it were doing their job properly. He highlighted the balls, he highlighted playing late at night and then early in the morning and injuries. I just wondered whether you heard that, but also if you'd like to add something. Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't heard that. Um, I actually saw Vashik just <laughs> before I came here to, to, to see you guys, but I haven't, I haven't seen his statement on that. But there's been a lot of discussions on, um, on the effect of the different balls in every, basically every week uh, on the, the joints and the wrist and the shoulders and the elbows. And, uh, you know, I think someone told me that in terms of injuries, um, this year comparing to other years is, you know, drastically has gone up. So, um, yeah, in terms of the balls, I absolutely agree. There should be, there should be some discussion on that. I actually spoke about uh, that with uh, Andrea Gaudenzi, the ATP president, and Massimo, who is the CEO uh, in Paris during Paris BRC week. And you know, I, I shared my opinion and my views, and then you know, obviously they are thinking about various different options and ways of how to regulate that and how to make it uh, better for the players and prevent prevent injuries. Uh, in terms of the scheduling, I think you know there has been a lot of criticism and a lot of um, yeah, basically um, uh, um, player players complaining about it. So. I think that should be addressed in a proper way. Obviously, Davis Cup and ITF is regulated differently from ATP Tour and from Grand Slams. You have different governing bodies, different schedules, different broadcasting demands. In the end of the day, we know that the TV is the one deciding, fortunately or unfortunately, but you know there, there has to be more, I guess, thorough discussions on that as well. Thanks for tuning in to this watch along. While there's a break in play, here's a reminder to hit the like button, subscribe and click that notification bell. Your support helps to keep the channel going. While we're here, you can now become a member to enjoy perks including badges for the live chat, but also bonus material such as interviews with top players from both ATP and WTA tours. The membership link is pinned in the live chat. You can also follow us on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. So whether it be serves or volleys, forehands or backhands, serve bots or drop shots, we've got you covered. Whether that be via our website, talking-tennis.com, where you can read features and interviews from our top writers. Or if you prefer us in audio form, you can subscribe to our podcast on Apple, Amazon or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts from. Remember, we offer you wall-to-wall -wall coverage via our regular watch-alongs, magazine shows such as Nick's WTA Weekly or Damien and Mario's ATP version. Plus, we deliver top content from people on the ground, actually at the tournaments, so you get even nearer to the action. So... What are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, just going to fill in until Miles returns, which will ho hopefully be very, very soon. Uh, we, as you can see from the scoreboard, we have got underway, albeit that uh, nothing too dramatic happened in that first game where Osaka managed to hold serve. I'm just going to switch on my TV right now. So there we go. And I have the game on as we speak. As uh, Osaka, though, does bring up 15.30 uh, on the Plisk of a serve, uh, thanks to a lovely forehand there. Dun, 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 dun. I'm back. Are Can you, you guys hear me? All right. Yep, cool. I'm just okay. uh, in between two streams at the moment, but uh, I I'm here. I'm not too far away. I, I am tuning in and listening to you from time to time. So if you have any panic stations, but definitely if you write to me in the private chat, Miles, I can always see that. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, guys, I'm back. Uh, Ghosty, which part of your name would you like me to name your child after? The ghost or the gearlitis? I'm not sure either is a winner, but, you know, <laughs> we move. <laughs> I need to fix this ring light that I just got. Oh. 
Oh, there we go. It's a little better, I think. All right, cool. Wait, so I think in my ear, I think the commentators switched from Shanda Rubin and Coco Vandeweghe to Jason Goodall. That's an interesting switch. All right, one all, third set. Let's see who takes this match. Now it's become a interesting matchup. A place that both of them, or a place in the match that both of them probably remember quite well. I remember a lot of their matches going three sets, and with the kind of tennis they play, it really is one point here or there, as we saw in the second set, uh, with Pliskova's which Pliska was squeaked out. So let's see what happens in this third. Sorry. Honestly, I'm thinking that Pliskova is the favorite for this set. She just won the prior set. She has a little bit more momentum. Her serve is steadied out a little bit more. Um, and she's able to kind of reflect some of the pace Osaka has been given to her more than the other way around. If, Os if Osaka has been rushed, she hasn't been able to kind of get the ball back in the other side of the court. So I'm interested to see how that plays out. But I, I, I think Pliska was walking to the net as the winner in this set. Uh, and it, they just showed a stat here. The return points one are even, 24 and 24. So that's a really good indication of how tight the match has been so far. It's been a pretty decent level. It, it started off kind of shaky. Uh, Pliska was offering some double faults. But it's been a pretty high quality. If you like wham, bam, thank you, man type of tennis, then this has definitely been the match for you. And that's the kind of tennis I enjoy. So, Game point for Osaka here, 40-30. And she closes it with an ace. Wait, was that break point? Never mind. Sorry, I'm behind. <laughs> 14 aces for Osaka, 12 for Pliskova. Yeah, Terry, you're right. I do like a bit of a wham bam. <laughs> Rafa doesn't play Umber next. Rafa plays Jason Kubler next. Are we considering that just a win for for Rafa? Mm, but then Umber, mm, that could be interesting. Osaka is looking a little flat, just a little. I love how Rafa hasn't hit a ball since January of last year, and we're already bypassing some of his opponents. <laughs> like, oh, Jason Kubler. Then we're on the Umber. <laughs> I'm sure Kubler's like, if this is my one chance to get a win over Rafa Nadal, it's right now. So we'll see how that plays out. And Pliskova breaks early on in the second set. So maybe my prediction that Pliskova walks away with the W is correct. Osaka's reaction time is just a little bit behind where it was early on in this match. So that might be her undoing in this match. Pliskova's up a break.
Terry. Question: How many? I mean, if you had to guesstimate, how many times have you felt like a player should beat a player, but the opposite happens? If you had to guesstimate a percentage, how many? How what would that percentage be? And Terry, yeah, you're right. Osaka has become a bit sluggish. She has. Sorry, I was jamming to this commercial. <laughs> I never, I always forget sometimes that you guys are just looking at me talk, and when I'm not talking, it's awkward. At least that's what the commentary I've gotten from some live stream. Somebody was like, "Dude, you got to talk." I'm like, "Well, yeah, but I'm also a human. I can't talk a mile a minute every single minute." <laughs> Summer Down Under here at Tennis Channel, or Talking Tennis, rather. If you're just joining this, the watch along, my name is Miles David, and we are watching the second round match between Carolina Pliskova, former world number one and three-time champion here at Brisbane, and Naomi Osaka on the comeback trail after being off due to uh, motherhood and uh, maternity leave and making her second venture back onto the court after winning her first round in straight sets. So this is an interesting match here. Here at Talking Tennis, we just cracked 5,000 subscribers. Let's give a hand for that. That's really a great milestone. And we'd love to crack 10,000. So why not bump us up there? If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and do that. If you're listening to the sound of my voice, I'll be doing a lot more commentary from here throughout the rest of the Australian summer because I love talking tennis and it's a great platform and you should subscribe because it's free. And why not? If you found your way to this stream, then obviously you like a little bit about tennis. So why not subscribe and love it a little bit more? It's a great sport. <laughs> I am a Rafa fan. I am a Rafa fan out of the big, oh, almost knocked my mic over. Out of the big three, um, Rafa is my favorite. Um, I just have really, not if I could say really low. I actually don't have any expectations for what his 2024 could look like. I just am, um, I was happy to see that he got through his first match against Dominic team without much fuss especially injury. So yeah, if he stays injury free, who knows what could happen this year, especially when we get on his beloved clay, but uh, just happy to see him back out there swinging away. Well, that was one of the longest points of the match right there. Osaka now has two break points to get back on serve. We were just saying that she was looking a little sluggish. But that was the best she's moved in a while. Maybe she just needed a little bit of break that she got on that changeover. Francis versus Rafa at the U.S. Open. Um, I'm always rooting for Francis, but that was like a win-win match for me personally. Um, it was a little extra special because Francis had never had a moment like that against the big three on one of the biggest stages in the sport. So I felt really happy for him, but I would have been okay if Rafa won too, because he would have faced Andre Rublev next and <laughs> he probably would have won that one. Uh, so that would have, that would have meant a, but that would have meant a Alcaraz and Nadal semi. Uh, yeah. Sign me up for that in New York, but we got to, Alcaraz and Tiafo semi, which I'm not mad about either. That's actually a very rewatchable semi too. If you're ever on YouTube, which you are now, go uh, check out Alcaraz and Tiafo 2022 US Open semifinal. Definitely a good watch if you didn't watch it live.
Pliskova's been able to knock off some of the break points against her, and now she has a game point. Osaka's going to be kind of shooting herself in the foot. She didn't convert there. Wow. Thirteen aces for Pliskova here. Lucky number thirteen. And she's up three one. That was a crucial game for her to not give that break back. Wow. Nice little fist pump across the court. She consolidates that break. Not sure Naomi has the afterburners to come back from a breakdown in this set. But we'll see. Pliskova can go off the rails. Uh, it's early on in the season, though, so we'll see if that happens. Not lost yet, but I still feel as though it's been a good couple of matches for Osaka. Yeah, I mean, if Osaka goes and loses this, she still can say that she took a set off of a seated player, a player that's, I believe, I think Pliskova is going to be seated. She may not be, um, she may just be out of seating for Australia. I think Pliskova is like 34 or something in the rankings. Let's see. She's 39. So, yeah, she'll be just outside of seating, which makes an interesting component because if Pliskova goes and let's say she goes on and wins Brisbane, I, I'm not sure if that win is going to bump her up from 39 inside the top 32. It might. I don't know how that would work out. We have to see if it ever if that if that situation happens. But I don't think Pliskova is going to be a, a, a name the players want to see in the first round if they're seated. So uh, that's interesting. Neither is, neither is Naomi. Even if Naomi goes on to lose this match, um, she's shown that she has a gear in her that can still hang with some of the best. So, yeah, it's interesting. Interesting next steps after this match for both players. Osaka just seems a bit... Um, just not, I wouldn't say tired, but I guess, you know, large umbrella term, she does look a little tired. It's kind of showing itself when she goes up for the serves. Um, and just how she is walking around the court. Uh, she did manage to hold there, which is good, but I'm sure that's just something that will come with more match play. I'm sure she didn't expect to just come out of the woodworks, having heaps and heaps of endurance and stamina. But it's a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction for Osaka. I'm not counting her out yet. She's only down one break, and she's still within touching, touching uh, period. If she if she breaks here, then who knows what happens. So, um, and Pliska was known for a wild, wild match or two or three or four. So, stay tuned. I'm just reading some of the comments here, guys. How many people are in the space? Let's see. This is a 500 for the WTA, Terry. 
Most definitely. Oh, there's 52 people in here? Hi. It's all 52 of you. I don't see 52 of you in the chat. So there's there's something we got to work on. If you're listening or if you're watching along, then get in the chat and talk to me. I feel like I'm the best host when there's people in the in the in the uh, comments talking, and I'm not just talking to myself. <laughs> oh, Terry, that's a good point. This is a five hundred for the WTA, so maybe you know, just hypothetically speaking, if Pushkova does go on to win the whole thing, maybe it does get her into the top thirty-two for seeding because seeding is probably going to be made after this week's ranking. So when Monday's rankings come out, that's when they're going to make the seedings for Australia. So the top 10 or so probably won't change, but that 20 to 32 range, depending on who does what where this week, it could change. It could definitely change. So we are going to be number one. Sapling is going to be number two, most likely. Um, so, yeah. Maybe that's extra ed, uh, incentive for Pliskova to win here. And there's something about the courts that she likes. And I think she's the defending champion <laughs> in a weird way. Hi, sports and politics. Um, thanks for being in the chat. Feel free to let me know where you're, where you're uh, chatting in from. But Pliskova won in 2020. She beat Madison Keys in the final. 2021, Brisbane did not happen because remember, I don't know if you guys remember, but remember they had those... Uh, they call them like the Melbourne summer sets where they had, they basically just use the facilities in Melbourne to have the warm-up warm up tournaments before the Australian Open. And in 2022, they did something similar. And in 2023, there just wasn't Brisbane. So uh, 2024, Brisbane's back. Ghosty Madison she might not be in Australia yet because she pulled out of the Adelaide 500 that is happening next week. She pulled out of that. Some people are speculating that she may be either pregnant or trying to get pregnant because she just uh, she's getting engaged or she's gotten engaged. Sorry, she's planning a wedding. That's all hearsay. But um, yeah, she pulled out of Adelaide, so maybe Australia's up. Maybe Melbourne and the Australians open. Australian open. Oh. Naomi, that was a terrible drop shot, but she made it work. <laughs> I don't think she's hit a drop shot all tournament, really. Yeah, that was not the best <laughs> drop shot, but she made it work. Um, tuning in from the world, that's a that's a great that's a great one. Uh, Muhova's absent does make me sad. I like watching her play. Anytime Muhova makes her way to like the business end of a tournament, I'm always intrigued into what she can do because, believe it or not, um, she's only won one WTA title. Muhova has, and she's been to the quarterfinals or better at every single major, but only one title to her name. So that's an interesting thing that I hope hope she can change in 2024 if she's healthy. Za is asking, when is Nick Kyrgios returning? I know he's missing Aussie Open. Uh, Pliskova has a 3-2 head to head over Naomi. She does. But I personally am not missing Nick Kyrgios that much. I don't think the tennis tour and like the fun of tennis is really missing Nick Kyrgios too much. Um, unless you are a diehard Nick Kyrgios fan and subscribe to his OnlyFans and you might feel different. But I don't think he has enough professionalism and passion for tennis. I mean, matter of fact, he says he doesn't. He's always the first to say he doesn't love tennis that much. So it kind of grinds my gears when he's out there saying he doesn't like tennis, but then is constantly giving us updates about why he's not playing. It's like, which one is it? Like, are you injured and not playing or do you just not like the sport that you've managed to somehow become professional at? He's 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 a weird guy to me. Um, I can see how I can see in a way how he's good for tennis because he, he he's an easy clickbait title. Um, but yeah, I'm not really missing his tennis per se because it's so hit or miss. It's 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 almost barely there. Only fans. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, Terry, he's a good highlight. You know what? He's a he's great to watch on a match that has already been determined, and now I'm watching the highlights from, or like his highlight reel of the best shots of the year. He's great for that, but like week in, week out, which unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, but that is the nature of the beast in tennis, week in, week out, preparation, professionalism, competition. Those are not his... Those are not his fortes, and that's why he's never been in the top 10. He's never won a slam. He's never won a 1,000. That's like you just – either either things have to align for you in a very miraculous way or you you work your behind off to get to those levels, and I don't think either has, has been happening for him. So there's that. Osaka has some game points to, again, keep within touching distance of Pliskova. It's still only one break. But Pliskova has been the more solid and um, chipper player. Not a word I would normally associate with Pliskova, but she has been the more solid and chipper in this final set. <laughs> Za, do you really think Nick Kyrgios' Wimbledon run was entertaining? I mean, I shouldn't say that because you just said it was, so I'm not challenging your opinion. I just think it's a little bit... Uh, inflated because one he didn't even compete in the semis which is not his fault but that is what happened it didn't he didn't compete in the semis due to a walkover from rafa his quarterfinal opponent was christian Garin on grass no disrespect to christian Garin, but we haven't seen much of him since um and his other opponents were brandon nakashima and paul jubb and i think he had an upset over Sitsipas. Sitsipas was the bright spot in that entire run to me. Everything else was kind of just like the only memorable thing I should say about that Wimbledon run was him wearing a red hat. That's it. <laughs> the tennis was like okay, but then again, you have to understand that I'm 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 trying to be biased, but I can't because I'm really not a fan. So sorry. Ghosty Nakashima is a good player. He's just been having a rough go of it. I actually did some research <laughs> um, on Nakashima. He's one of like maybe five or six men that are kind of close around the top 100 that are signed to Feli. And I I just see a commercial with Feli shoes in them. I thought that's interesting. I think it's him, uh, Sun Moon Kwan of Korea, Alexi Poprin is with Feli, Diego Schwartzman, um, I think some other names too. He did take a set off of Novak Djokovic on center court, but so did Matteo Berrettini. So did Hubie Hercash. So did uh, Yannick Sinner. He took two sets. Um, there's been a couple of players who have taken a set off of Djokovic on center court that I think are of better caliber than Nick Kyrgios. So that being the barometer is not moving me closer to the Nick Kyrgios is great camp. But, you know, again, my personal opinion. If he had won, then he would. If if Nick Kyrgios had won that tournament and beaten Djokovic in the final, I would give him a lot more leeway to kind of hang his hat on that because he. But Nick uh, Djokovic was the three or four time defending champion, so yeah, I, he would have deserved to hang his hat. But him walking around saying, "Oh, I'm a Wimbledon finalist, bro," it's like, dude. I'm kind of. I'm. I'll end the tangent here, but. Marin Cilic has a Grand Slam and more finals than you. David Ferrer has also gotten to a Grand Slam. Robin Soderling has two Grand Slam finals. Uh, Kanye Shikori has gotten to a Grand Slam final. Kevin Anderson's gotten to more Grand Slam finals than Nick Kyrgios has. So it's like uh, you're on shaky waters trying to say that you're so great for the game just because you got to that Wimbledon final. And there's other players who have eclipsed you. <laughs> so it's like... I don't know. Yeah, Nick's comments about Boris Becker were very silly. 
But Ghosty Allen Iverson's kind of a good example, memorable, extremely memorable. You can't tell the story of a certain sector of the NBA without talking by Allen Iverson. But when you zoom out a little bit and look at the big story of who's the most memorable, who are the champions of the sport of basketball, Allen Iverson in my ecosystem doesn't come up that often. He comes up as like a good watch and very talented, but not a champion. And that's the exact way I think of Nick Kyrgios. Very talented, decent watch, not a champion. And in tennis, although it's tough, only one person wins every tournament. It's not like it's a group of people, but if you don't win the big ones and you're not a champion, you're a good player. David Ferrer, good play or David Ferrer, good player, not a champion. Robin Soderling, good player, not a champion. Who was who a good player that was a champion? Thomas Johansson, good player. A champion. <laughs> Big point here. Deuce, 4-3, Pliskova serving. Pliskova's actually saved 10 of 12 break points this match. That's incredible. Because that's a lot of pressure to be under and constantly coming up with the, the bar. John, you're saying Nick would in the 80s would struggle. Why? Because of the racket technology and you having to be, I, I guess there's an argument that you had to be even more fit back then because there weren't the uh, strides made in recovery. So if you were really in the trenches kind of playing week to week with wooden or, you know, newer metal rackets, then you weren't getting help based off of technology. Basically, it was pretty much all you and what you could what you could do, not the strings and the technology in the actual gear. So I can see that. I can see how Nick Curios kind of leans on those things, the racket technology being what it is now to get ahead. Hey, Josh. Hi, abs 017. Abs, does that stand for like, like six pack abs or are those your initials? <laughs> I'm just wondering. And thanks for subscribing. Josh asks, do you think Pliskova will be a Hall of Famer if she, if she wins a Grand Slam? I don't think she's winning a Grand Slam, but if she does win a Grand Slam, I do think she'll be in the Hall of Fame. That Slam win plus the weeks at number one um, kind of makes you a shoe in The same way I think Wozniacki is going to be in the Hall of Fame. Um, she only only has one Grand Slam, but she has multiple, multiple weeks at world number one. And I like those two things are the pinnacle of success in singles. So if you get both of them, then I think you deserve to be in the hall of fame personally. Some people would debate me and I can see why they would debate that Pliskova is not hall of fame worthy, but on paper, multiple WTA titles, multiple grand slam finals. If she wins a slam and she got to world number one, I think all of that combined makes you hall of fame. So Osaka here serving at 3-5 to stay in the match. We're two hours and seven minutes in. Osaka definitely felt like she, it wasn't massive, but there was a moment early in that third set where it kind of felt like Osaka lost her win. She started to get it back a little bit, but at that point, Pliskova, or at, at that point in the match, Pliskova was kind of too far ahead in the momentum, so... You know, if Osaka if Osaka holds here and, and makes Pliskova 
attempt to serve it out. Things could be interesting, but we'll see what happens. Keeping an eye on it. Sorry, I'm not tired. Not tired at all. <laughs> ABS017 are your initials. Got it. But then you you might still have six pack abs. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, welcome to the chat. <laughs> oh, nice little cute drop shot for Osaka to go up 40 love. <laughs> Ghosty, I do agree with something you're saying here that tennis is a little aristocratic and soft it'll it is a little bit just a little i don't agree that nick curios deserves a pass because he he has crossed lines where i'm just like dude even if tennis was a all-out brutal uh fist to cuff sport i still wouldn't necessarily be a fan of curios he would rub me the wrong way but in the sport that he chose to play, his personality is just not the one that the establishment um, is going to rally around, really. They rally, he gets publicity because he is so polarizing, not because people just genuinely like him, if that, make, if that makes sense. I, that's how I look at it. Well, Osaka has asked the question of Pliskova, can she serve it out, which is the most you can do in this situation. And we'll see on the other side of this change of ends if Pliskova can do that. Ghosty, I also agree. Um, Nick Kyrgios's race and uh, skin tone definitely doesn't help his persona, that's for sure. Perfect is well, maybe not perfect example, but one something gets popped in my head. When Serena first popped on the scene and they, they thought that, you know, her and her sister had a pompous walk when it was just them being confident in their abilities, as they should have been because their athletic ability was far and above and we, we saw it, was far and above the current um, era that they were playing in compared to somebody who has a, who in my opinion had a very, I'm here and you're going to learn about me kind of walk. Sophia Kennan, it was kind of cutesy when Sophia Kennan did it, but not so much when Serena Williams did it. And Sophia Kennan might not be a perfect example because she's nowhere near as accomplished, but she has a certain, it, it may be hard to think about, but when she first came on the scene before she was a Grand Slam champion, she had a, a certain kind of a walk to her, in my opinion. Um, but most people commented on it as, as it being kind of uh, cute. Another example, Danielle Collins. I think Danielle Collins, I don't have anything personally against her, but I think she does benefit from being a white American woman with blonde hair doing some of the kind of catty karen -y things that she does. If she looked like Osaka or Serena, it probably would get a, lo a little bit more um, publicity. That's all. Ran over. All right, Osaka, let's see what you got. Quickly, 30 love. Pliskova, she's trying to close the door here and close out this match. It'll be a good win for her. It'll be her first match of the season. Osaka, just a little long on these returns. Uh, four match, three match points for Osaka. Jasmine Paulini is still in the United Cup. She's not playing at Brisbane. She's playing for Italy in the United Cup, Zah. Okay. Oh, wait. The total points won before this match point was 100 and 100 for each player. 100 for Pliskova, 100 for Osaka. And 
Pliskova closes it out with the unreturnable serve, and Pliskova's into the third round. That was a great match. Um, there were definitely some spotty moments, um, but you get that with players that play such um, high-risk, high-reward tennis. But the scoreline kind of shows it. It was tight. It was some here or there kind of moments where what one point one way Osaka could have won, and one point one way Pliskova ended up winning. So, yeah. I think that's a good show for Osaka's first tournament back in the comeback. And that's definitely a good win for Pliskova in her first match of 2024. So all in all, I think both of them should walk away with uh, some positives from the match. We'll see. Uh, Pliskova certainly enjoys the court conditions in Brisbane. As I've said a couple of times, she's a three-time champion here and technically the defending champion because it hasn't been played since 2020. So uh, that was that. <laughs> all right, guys, I am going to leave you all as the players are leaving the court. Osaka is waving to her fans in Brisbane with a nice smirk on her face as the crowd gives her some love. Hopefully you guys can uh, show me some love on my socials and also on my independent YouTube channel at Tuned Into Tennis. So you can type in Miles David and Tuned Into Tennis. I am out of here for the time being. You can follow me on socials at Tuned Into Tennis on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. And like I said just before, YouTube for all of my commentary about the sport. Thanks to John at Talking Tennis for giving me the, the platform to chat with you guys and commentate throughout this watch along. It's been fun. Congrats to Pliskova. And we are off to a great start in 2024. Good luck to the rest of the, the women in the Brisbane International. You guys might be seeing my face again uh, for some more matches this week. So we'll see. Keep an eye out. And the best way to keep an eye out is to subscribe to the channel. We're just over the $5,000, $5,000, the 5,000 subscriber mark. So, uh, Tell a friend, share, and keep us growing. Until next time, guys, it's been fun. Talk to you soon, and keep enjoying the tennis. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis. Ready? Play. Emma Vaducanu has given an interview with the BBC where she's outlined her plans to return from injury, when that will be. She's also explained what she's been up to whilst away and she's been watching much tennis. Uh, she's also got an answer for the critics, of which, um, you know, some on social media, but also, of course, many within the media. And she's also explained which is the slam that she would most like to win. What is her ultimate dream in tennis? So, as I say, the interview was given to BBC London earlier on today, where she outlined her plans to return to next for next season, and also how she would one day love to win Wimbledon. So, she will make her return to tennis next season after struggling with injuries since, mainly since May. Uh, she obviously had injuries since then, but she hasn't played since May. She withdrew from the Madrid Open, uh, I think on the eve of the tournament, um, to basically uh, have some operations. Um, she's missed three of the four Grand Slams. She did play in Australia where she lost to Coco Goff. And, uh, of course, just a couple of days ago, she dropped out of the world's top 200 and did confirm in this interview with BBC uh, London that she will not be returning to the tour until next year. Um, Britain didn't make the Billie Jean King Cup uh, finals, which will take place in Seville in the south of Spain uh, in November. Also, she has no hope of making the WTO finals also in November. So she confirmed that next season will be her return to tennis. 20 year old also said that the slams will obviously finish now but it has been difficult to watch them go by 
Um, she was just said, I want to stay in my lane as much as possible and keep focused on my recovery, were her exact words. The 20-year-old has been hampered, though, by injuries since winning that US Open title in 2021, when remarkably she managed to qualify and go all the way to the title without dropping a set in New York. She also made British number one at one point as a result, um, but has not gone beyond the second round of any Grand Slam since that mesmeric, incredible run uh, two years ago when she became the first British woman in 44 years to win a major singles title since Virginia Wade. She was also asked about how she deals with criticism, and Raducanu had this to say. The fact they are still talking about me, even though I'm not at these events, is just a compliment. Someone told me once, for example, worry when they're not talking about you, she added. Raducanu has, of course, returned to the practice court. We did see some glimpses of her playing some short tennis in August, for example. Uh, the first time since she went under underwent surgery earlier on this year. And in fact, she only did play 10 matches in the first five months of the year. She said she does hope to return to better form and fulfil her Wimbledon dreams. Wimbledon is the dream, she said, and always has been growing up. Of course, she's from the UK, so it makes sense. She said, it's the ultimate dream to win Wimbledon. Back in May, she seemed to undergo three successful surgeries. Um, she said that she underwent the surgeries on both of her wrists and her ankle in a letter posted on social media. In fact, she said at the time, it's safe to say the last 10 months, so that would have been the summer of 2022 until these surgeries in May of this year have been difficult as I dealt with a recurring injury on both on a bone of both hands, she said at the time. She said she tried to manage the pain and play through it for most of the year, but in the end it was just getting too much. Uh, she was missing so much of training as well as certain tournaments anyway that for her it made sense, sense to go ahead with these procedures. Well, now she has confirmed that she will be back uh, I would imagine, therefore, for the Australian swing, maybe United Cup, end of December, beginning of January, perhaps, for the 250 in New Zealand uh, or elsewhere. And then, of course, the Australian Open. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.